Cable 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Welcome to Bath, North Carolina. We are in one of God's most beautiful creations, Bath, North Carolina. And this is a big weekend coming up in Bath. Welcome to Talk of the Town here on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. And we are coming to you from the Virginia line all the way down to almost Wilmington. And the reason for that is because, um, well, we do that every day, but we wanted to uh, come out this morning and, and highlight what is going on this weekend in Bath because this is the 300th anniversary, the tricentennial of uh, – Blackbeard's death, and in, in, uh, there's going to be a lot of discussion about that today. One of uh, Eastern North Carolina's most famous residents, other than Jason Pear, Blackbeard, once lived here in Bath. Good morning, Jason Pear. Good morning, Henry. How you doing? Jason Pear from Pear Electronics, the unofficial mayor of Bath, North Carolina. we got the real mayor coming on here in a few minutes. Uh, uh, Jimmy Latham will be here. We also have Bubs Carson in here with us this morning, and uh, a lot of friends are stopping by in Bath already. And I, I was a little bit late getting here because just as I was crossing the Bath Bridge this morning, Jason, I noticed the sunrise, and I thought, okay, I'm going to be five minutes late. I'm going to go down to Bonner's Point and take a picture. So I went down to Bonner's Point, took a picture, put it on Facebook. So if you want to see what Bonner's Point looked like this morning with the sun rising over it, it's on my Facebook page. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Oh, absolutely. All right, tell us about what's happening this weekend. This is going to be a big weekend in Bath. You know, um, Henry, we've we've got a big celebration. The Greater Bath Foundation's got a real big celebration planned um, for this weekend. I know there's a lot of things going on, but it's going to be one of those events that's going to be really uh, uh, just something to really remember. We've got a sponsor's reception uh, that we're having at the Turnage Theater starting at 6.30 p.m. on Friday night. Uh, it's going to be a really nice event. Uh, we still have some tickets uh, left of that. The tickets are $100 a piece. Um, but the real main event is on Saturday, and the event on Saturday is going to go from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. But we're going to have the whole Main Street filled up from food vendors. We have about 65 uh, reenactors coming in. We've got three pirate ships. We're going to recreate a sea battle out in Bath Creek. We've got about eight cannons anywhere from the, you know, if you've ever seen the little small cannon at the ECU football game, we've got the real big four- and six-pound cannons, you know, coming in. It's going to be really impressive. We've got three music groups, a band from Disney World, um, you know, it's, and we're also having a children's parade. We're going to start at 11, you know, around 11.20. You know, 11 o'clock is the opening ceremony down at Bonner's Point where we have um, – the skydiving blackbeards coming in to land right at the at the uh, front at Bonner's Point. Skydiving blackbeards. Yep, skydiving blackbeards. <laughs> it's really going to be really neat. It'll be nothing else like it. Um, but you, you know, it, it's a real family friendly event. You know, there's no alcohol permitted, but the its history will be made right here in Bath. Uh, we've got some wonderful things to say. We've got some people going to come on today and talk about those things. But well, one of them just walked in, Kevin Duffus, who is probably the um, I would say Kevin has become the foremost authority in the world on Blackbeard the Pirate. I, I, and, I would say so. There's Kevin, Kevin, how many books have you written on Blackbeard? We're good. Uh, I've written one four times. Yeah. You've written one book four times? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, Kevin who, uh, who has a passion for uh, Bath and Blackbeard, and uh, we'll hear from Kay. I tell you, if you've never heard, we've had, we've had Kevin on several times. If you've never heard Kevin talk about his uh, research on Blackbeard, uh, you'll, you'll want to listen. Kevin's going to be on here in just a few minutes. We are live in uh, Bath this morning. Uh, I failed to say at the beginning of the uh, program where we're actually located, so we want you to come join us this morning if you're out in Beaufort County anywhere or anywhere close to us. We're in the Old Town Country Kitchen. See, I passed by here because the sign out front said the grill, <laughs> and I, did, I missed the Old Town Country <laughs> Kitchen part of it. But uh, thanks to Dalton Boyd and uh, the folks here at uh, Old Town Country Kitchen. This is my first Old Town Country Kitchen experience, and I haven't had a chance to eat yet, but trust me, I'm going to because I was looking around on people's plates when I walked in Absolutely. here. Absolutely. The cheese biscuits are amazing. Yeah, I'm sure. 
So thanks to Dalton and the guys here at Old Town Country Kitchen. That's where we're located. Also, thanks to our other sponsors uh, of Talk of the Town in Bath this morning, the Rich Company, Tom Atkinson, who I heard Tom's not going to be able to be with us this morning. But uh, Tom, of course, the Rich Company has an office here in Bath. I just passed it on the way in. Uh, First Bank of Washington and Bellhaven, our friend William Taylor. I think William's going to stop by. Uh, Greek Spore Construction, Timmy Greek Spore, and uh, he may or may not stop by, I'm told, but uh, thank you for, uh, for sponsoring the show, uh, Timmy. And Pair Electronics, uh, where you can get all your electronics needs met. And uh, yes, it's uh, true that I, uh, Jason is the only person that I've ever given a key to my house that's not a member of my family. And uh, so I trust him that much. Well, thank you, Henry. <laughs> What's going on, Pier Electronics? Anything new you want to plug while, yeah, we're, just, while we're talking about your yeah, business? Sono speakers. Security is really the big thing with alarm.com. Be able to check your home or business anywhere with your phone. I got a question about Sono speakers. Yeah. So you, can, do you have to have them connected to uh, a system in your house, or can, are they made now so you can just Bluetooth them and use them off your phone? Well, there's two different types of technology. There's Bluetooth, which actually you can actually Bluetooth from your phone to a speaker, yeah. and they only have a 30-foot range. Sonos actually uses Wi-Fi, yeah. so you're going to get the best possible sound and clarity, and that's how you're able to stream all your music services where you're not using all your data from your phone. Right. Um, well, um, I'm thinking you need to hook me up because I'm thinking about a Sonos speaker for my backyard. Right. We can do it. Right. We, we, we'll, we can definitely we'll, do we'll, it. We'll talk about that. All right, 18 minutes after 7 o'clock. It is, I tell you, it's a chilly morning. We had talked about maybe being outside this morning, but it's 48 degrees right now. Forty. I, this is the first time I think we've seen 40 since the spring. Uh, We're in the 40s right now in Bath. It's 48 here. It's 54 in New Bern. Uh, 50 degrees in Greenville as we join you here this morning. And the uh, temperatures are going to be uh, sunny and cool today. Temperatures will only get up to about 62 today. Uh, on Thursday night, we're going to be colder and drier. You know, we, we actually could get into the 30s tonight. Unreal. That's, I mean, it's changing really fast. That cold front came through last night and uh, changed the whole deal. Tomorrow, as we uh, get ready for a lot of high school football and free boot Friday in Greenville, sunny skies. High temperatures uh, tomorrow about 65 degrees and lows tomorrow night. Uh, not as cold, about 50, 52 maybe for a low tomorrow night. And then uh, Saturday, we're now looking at a 60% chance of rain, which is not good. But this, all, this is going to go rain or shine, right? Mm -hmm. Rain or shine. Uh, scatter, it's going to be scattered, though, so don't let that stop you. High temperatures will be around 72 degrees, and we'll be back in the 40s on Saturday. But tonight... Uh, we could get into the 30s as we uh, as as the weather continues to change and we hit that hit that one two or three day period where you get that cold front and fall all of a sudden just kind of hits mm -hmm. us all at once. Uh, Jason Pear from Pear Electronics, we're here in uh, Bath this morning at the Old Town Country Kitchen. Now the events this weekend are all free to the public, right? They are free to the public. The only thing that is a ticketed event is the Friday night event, which <clears throat> if you want to come to something really special and unique, I would highly you know encourage it. Yep. This, is, uh, this is at the Turnage? At the Turnage Theater in Washington. <clears throat> you know, tickets are still available. They can, you know, call me at 252-413-9517. Uh, but we've got some left, but it's going to be a very well-attended event. Right. You, you know, just, and as I said earlier, there are a lot of things, you know, going on this weekend with other events. But one of the biggest positive things I look at is that, you know, we've had so much traumatic things going on in our state. And, you know, to me, I encourage everybody, if it's not with Blackbeard or there's I think something in Kenton or Washington, to get out because these are positive things to kind of bring you know positive feelings with some of the terrible things we've had with hurricanes, people being displaced, and stuff like that to be an encouragement. Yeah, you're exactly right, it, and it's going to be a beautiful weekend to do that if we can keep these scattered showers away from us. Uh, Kevin Duffus, the author, coming up, going to tell us about Blackbeard, and I heard that Kevin is actually. Are we having a it, are they finally putting Blackbeard on trial tomorrow? Is that true? Absolutely, at 2, at 2 o'clock. So is that going to be open to the public? Mm -hmm. that, uh, I think it's, it's reservation, but it will be. There's a certain number of seats. Is that but at the turnage also? Uh, no, oh, at, at the Superior Courthouse in Beaufort well, County. Well, actually be in the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Now, the thinking behind that is that uh, Blackbeard never actually got his day in court. Is that what happened? Is that why we're I'm going to let it? Kevin tell you the whole thing as soon as he gets <laughs> on. Well, he's coming on next, so, so uh, stand by and uh, – 
uh, Kevin Duffus will join us. Uh, live, in Bla- at, uh, live in Bath this morning and uh, the uh, 300th anniversary. And, and this is the 300th anniversary of Blackbeard's death, right? It is the 300th anniversary of Blackbeard's death, Henry. You know, and, and also, too, <clears throat> I, I just this event is <clears throat> going to really help the town of Bath out. You know, one of the things everybody wants to know why we're doing so much for the town you know, all, a lot of small towns in North Carolina need a lot of things. They're handicapped by a lot of different, you know, um, obstacles. And one of the big things we're trying to do is help raise money for infrastructure, you know, sewer systems, uh, repairs, so, lots of different things. So so the money raised from this event this weekend will, will actually go to the town. Yeah, we're actually going to be donating, you know, uh, yeah. some of the proceeds to the town. Yeah. Is this, is this the oldest town in North Carolina? Mm-hmm. Oldest municipality in North Carolina. Yep. And I just attended, uh, and the oldest church. That's right. In the, in the state. Oldest. Oldest standing church in North Carolina. Yeah, and I just went to a wedding in there, and it's beautiful. And being and the first port of North Carolina, which started port? trade and yeah. commerce in North Carolina. So there are a lot of firsts here uh, in in um, in Bath. All right, 23 after, uh, stand by. McGee is back at the studio, and we're going to have some sports headlines here, a lot of sports as we get ready for the weekend. Uh, let me thank the crew for getting up early this morning. Michael Busimi is here. Mm-hmm. Michael left Wilson left Wilson this morning about 2 a.m. to get. What time did you have to leave Wilson? 3.30 this morning. And uh, we even have Thomas, the former intern, now producer of uh, Tom, Tom and Sadie in the afternoon. How did he convince you into doing this this morning? You paying me. I'm pa- <laughs> <laughs> you paying me? You mean, you mean this isn't a labor of love? You do this for money? And the guy who's not getting paid, uh, Joel, the intern who was here. See what happens, Joel? If you wait long enough, we actually start paying you. <laughs> We are live at the Old Town Country Kitchen here this morning, getting ready for the Blackbeard 300 celebration. 24 minutes after 7 o'clock, McGee is in the studio this morning, and uh, thanks to Coach Carr back at Mission Control, who's twisting the dials in the studio this morning. 26 minutes after uh, 8 o'clock, and yeah, McGee, you're right. That was big news coming out of ECU yesterday, the unexpected resignation of the women's basketball coach up there. So, Uh, 26 minutes after... uh, 7 o'clock, again, uh, uh, our interview with Kevin Duffus is coming up here in a few minutes. And if you've never uh, heard Kevin, he is, boy, he's, he's a wealth of knowledge and very entertaining. Has written many books about Blackbeard and pirates in, in North Carolina and, uh, he, and shipwrecks. And, uh, and what? Light, oh, yeah, lighthouses, yeah. You've become, you become the uh, coastal author. And we're going to have Kevin on here in just a second here at the uh, Country Kitchen in Bath. Uh, uh, my buddy Jason Pear is uh, still here with us. Jason, uh, this big event this weekend, we're hoping that we, you have thousands of people come down to Bath this weekend. Um, and I know you had to you had to have some help with this. I know you got some sponsors you want to mention. We absolutely did, Henry, you know, because, you know, if we didn't have our sponsors, none of these events would happen. You know, some of our, our sponsors would like to – Thank is is Nutrium, uh, Ray McKeithen. They've done a great job in helping us out. You know we've got uh, Wells Fargo, First Bank, Slade Landscaping, Garden Classics, um, uh, Menji's Bottling Group, uh, Bojangles. Uh, Want to you know thank also we've got um, uh, Willard Insurance, uh, Invenergy. Also want to thank Executive Personnel and uh, the Rich Company. And the list keeps on going on. All right. We uh, thank everybody who's participating. And thanks to our sponsors this morning as well, which uh, we told you earlier we'll, we'll mention them again coming back. Let's, let's take a break. Uh, 27, make it 28 after uh, 7 o'clock, live in Bath this morning on Talk of the Town. Good to have you with us. And uh, we're going to take a break. And we'll be back with more. McGee will have some news headlines back at the uh, studio. And then we're coming back here to Bath. And Kevin Duffus will join us, and I promise you, you'll enter, you'll uh, enjoy this interview with Kevin coming up. Stay with us. More coming up live on Talk of the Town from Bath right after this. 
All right, welcome back. We are live in Bath this morning. It is the uh, weekend coming up, the 300th anniversary of Blackbeard's demise. It's the Blackbeard Tricentennial here at uh, Bath. Welcome back to uh, our program this morning. We're live on location in Bath, one of the most beautiful spots in North Carolina. I was down at Bonners Point early this morning, took a beautiful picture of Bonners Point and the sunrise. You can see that on my Facebook page. If you go to my Facebook page, uh, I put it on there. And uh, let me say thanks to all of our sponsors this morning, especially uh, Dalton Boyd here at Old Town Country Kitchen, where, where we're located. We've got a good crowd of uh, locals in here this morning. I bet there's a good crowd of locals in here every morning, Jason. Absolutely. This Jason, place is really packed. Jason Pear, uh, my co-host for the morning, who helped organize uh, the broadcast and helped organize this weekend. Also, thanks to uh, Greek Spore Construction. Here in Bath, uh, the Rich Company, which has locations uh, here in Bath. Of course, their main location in Washington. First Bank of Washington and Bellhaven. And uh, Pear Electronics, our sponsors for this morning. All right, let's uh, – I promised uh, an interview with Kevin Duffus. Kevin has joined us. And if you've never, uh, if you've never uh, heard uh, me interview Kevin before or, or heard him being interviewed on public TV or any of the many places where he can be found – uh, this guy is a wealth of knowledge, not only about uh, Blackbeard, but about uh, coastal lore in North Carolina, in eastern North Carolina. He's written several books. He wrote The Last Days of Blackbeard, and his new book is Into the Burning Sea. And uh, he's one of the organizers this morning. Good morning, Kevin Duffus. Good morning, How are you? Henry. I'm thrilled good, to be back with good you. Good to see you again. <laughs> Absolutely. And yeah. Kevin's an old broadcaster, spent years at WNCT TV, and. Uh, <laughs> Then he went to WRAL and was a director of the 6 o'clock news with Charlie Gaddy for many years and all the guys up there. That, and then you transitioned away from uh, television. Well, I finally got to do what I, I've always wanted to do, which was to research and write about North Carolina maritime history. I, I, that no other place in America has the history that the coast of North Carolina has. And it really all started right here in Bath. I mean, I can, you, I can tell you stories that took place here back in 1585. That was yeah. when really history began. I'm How do you research these things? Where do you go to get the information? Well, I've gone as far, at least in terms of the Blackbeard story, I've gone as far as the British archives in London, which I got to tell you, that's no kidding. That's an experience when you, when you uh, ask them to bring out a, a handwritten letter that a Royal Navy captain wrote on the James River in the, in the winter of 1718 about the capture and, and death of Blackbeard, that, that the actual letter and you're holding this thing that's, you know, nearly 300 wow. years old. It's, it's, it's really an amazing experience. You know, now, now what is the truth about Blackbeard and Bath? Because we've all heard all our lives that Blackbeard lived here in Bath. Give us the real story. What's the story behind the connection between this community and Blackbeard the Pirate? Edward Teach was his name. Uh, well, actually, Edward Thatch was oh, that's how right. his name was that's right. spelled in the records, but Thatch isn't even how that was pronounced. In yeah. fact, I've now proven that both Teach and Thatch were in 1718 were pronounced basically the same way as Tetch. Oh. And, and that's how the, the, the misspellings began. If, if I could leave the public and the world with, with one idea about, especially during this 300th anniversary, is that pirates were not the people that Hollywood and popular culture has wanted us to think they were. It's not Captain Jack. Well, they were basically everyday people, and and in the case of, in the case of the Blackbeard story, I think one of the most remarkable things about it is, and it, this happened a number. This is this information's been around for probably 15 years, but it was a, a a postal carrier here in Bath who loved genealogy and loved to do research, and he started doing research at the Beaufort County Courthouse and discovered. Uh, the, the coincidence of numerous names of men who were proven to be on Blackbeard's crew who, can be, who could be connected to uh, plantation owners or men who lived here in Bath uh, in, the, in the early 1700s, between 1710 and 1720. And the names, the family names, still exist today. These are, these are members of Blackbeard's crew whose names were uh, Boyd and uh, Brooks, and uh, Jackson and Martin. I mean, one of Blackbeard's crew members was John Martin, who was the son of the founder of, Ta of Bath, uh, Joel Martin. So th this was discovered in the early, around uh, 2001 to 2003. And then, I, and unfortunately, John Oden was the postal carrier and he passed away unexpectedly. And 
so I, I sort of picked up his research and, and, his, um, and was able to carry it even further and discovered that there were even uh, black men on Blackbeard's crew who were, in, in fact, uh, slaves but were uh, part of the crew, and they were uh -huh. pirates, who I've now connected to, uh, again, plantation owners here on Bath Creek. So, Well, here's the, here's the other thing that we all want to know, because, you know, we now have the East Carolina Pirates. We've named our, our sports teams after Pirates. And yet there, there's all sorts of conflicting feelings about Pirates from those days. Were Pirates bad guys, as we have been told over the years? Well, there, there were a the, – the, just – just like in America today, there were there were good people and there were bad people, and there were and there were pirates who became pirates purely to help their families. I mean, what happened here in Bath, and if I could paint a picture for you, is is that by in by 1715, Bath was in really a bad condition. The 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 population had fought a war with Tuscarora Indians. They had had an outbreak of yellow fever. They had a drought, famine. Uh, nobody was planting crops. And then on top of all of this, and you know, people don't realize that the king did not rule North Carolina, the colony of North Carolina. It was the Lord's proprietors. Right. And the Lord's proprietors were essentially real estate developers. <laughs> and so uh, the, the General Assembly sent a letter to the Lord's proprietors saying, we need help. Uh, can you allow us to pay our taxes with bills of credit instead of uh, uh, pounds sterling. And, and they said, no, as a matter of fact, that's the only way from now on we'll only accept pounds sterling for taxes. About that same time, a ship comes in up the Pamlico River and said that we just got news that 11 Spanish treasure ships wrecked on the coast of Florida in a hurricane. This was in 1715. Spilled millions and millions of, of dollars in gold and silver coins on the, in, on the beaches that were just washing up in the... So uh, there's, I have clear evidence that men from Rhode Island and Massachusetts and Virginia and South Carolina and Bermuda and even from the Caribbean, every, they all went to the coast of Florida to recover gold and silver. So don't you suppose that young men from Bath were part of that? I mean, it's... My favorite example of that is every, now, every year you hear about a uh, armored car that hits a bump on an interstate and the doors pop open and bags of money fall out. And then <laughs> the highway's filled with people, you know, scooping up bag, uh, you know, bags of money. Well, that's right. essentially what happened. And in, in this, this was really the, the beginning of the, what's called the golden age of piracy. So these were, again, these, these, they, were, I, they, were, they became pirates, which is unfortunate. But, and, and I say that they did because they didn't want to come home empty-handed. Yeah. You know, the, the Spanish started fighting these guys off. Uh, and um, and that's how they ended up falling into piracy. And and Blackbeard was never tried; he was just killed, right? And so you're going to you're, you're he's going to get his day in court as part of this weekend's big celebration. And I want to hear about that. Because, are you going to defend him? I am uh, going to testify as a witness to the facts of the case, and then we're going to have. The, see, the big question there is: Was Virginia? Uh, uh, lawful in its, they essentially invaded their neighboring colony of North Carolina. Governor Spotswood of Virginia sent an armed force into North Carolina to capture or kill Blackbeard. And the, the, no one has ever looked at this case really closely based on the evidence. So we're going to have at the Beaufort County Courthouse. Why, why did the governor of Virginia do that? Well, it, it's, a, it's much more complicated than what most pirate books said, but it, it was actually a failed political coup. There was an effort. There were two political parties in North Carolina in 1718, just like there are today. And one party was attempting to overthrow the other party. Um, the Lord's proprietors were totally incapable of, of helping their settlers, their pioneers, the people that were living here. Uh, and when, when, they were, when the people here were attacked by Tuscarora Indians, they sent an appeal to the Lord's proprietor saying, please send a militia, send armed forces, we need, we need help. And they said, well, we, we're real estate developers. We don't have that capability. But the king did, but the king didn't own North Carolina. So the whole, the whole purpose of killing, capturing or killing Blackbeard was to recover uh, evidence, and, and this is a popular word these days, but to recover evident, evidence to prove that the government of North Carolina was colluding with Pirates. And there was no collusion. There, no, there was. Well, in, in this in this particular case, there was collusion. There you know? was collusion. Yeah, Governor Eden was colluding clearly, yeah. but it wasn't because they were trying to make themselves rich. They were simply. So helping. the governor of North Carolina at that time was Eden. Governor Eden, yes. And the governor of Virginia was Spots. 
Spotswood. Spotsworth, right. yeah. And Governor Eden's political uh, uh, opponent or uh, adversary was Edward Mosley, who was the mm -hmm. Speaker of the House. And right. Edward Mosley wanted North Carolina to become a royal colony. And the only way for it to become a royal colony was to have the Lord's Proprietor's charter revoked. So that was the whole purpose of, of the Battle of Ocracoke. But we're going to look at the evidence. We're going to actually, at the Beaufort County Courthouse at 2 o'clock Friday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, we're going to have Lieutenant Governor Spotswood. We're going to have Governor Eden. We're going to have Tobias Knight from Bath. We're going to have a witness of the Battle of Ocracoke. And they're all going to testify. We're going to have Lieutenant Maynard. The evidence suggests that the entire operation was unlawful. Governor Spotswood had no authority to send armed forces into North Carolina. The Royal Navy had no authority to operate on the sounds of North Carolina. Absolutely no authority. Did so Blackbeard gets his day in court tomorrow in Washington at the Beaufort County Courthouse. Before Judge J. Carlton Cole, who is going to be a very fair judge. He's an active Superior Court judge this here is in a, Eastern North Carolina. This is a judge today, Judge Cole. Correct. Judge Cole, uh, he just... Uh, now, now has this been rehearsed and script, no, scripted? No. Well, there's the the facts. The facts of the case have been scripted so that yeah. we can stick. We want to really. But the stick judge closely. is going to rule. The judge is going to rule. The uh, Beaufort County District Attorney Seth Edwards is going to represent uh, Lieutenant Governor Spotswood and the Royal <laughs> Navy. An attorney from Waxhaw, North Carolina, named Eric Groves, is going to represent uh, Blackbeard. And I say very clearly, it's not just Blackbeard. It's Blackbeard and the young men from Bath, who. Uh, for whatever reason, for a period of time, became pirates and came home. That, you know, they left as salvagers of Spanish treasure, and right. two years later they came home, unfortunately, as pirates. But, you know, the king pardoned them. You know, the king offered all these guys a pardon. Yeah. And they were eligible. When Blackbeard was killed at Ocracoke, if, if he had evaded the Royal Navy for just two more weeks, he would have been pardoned by the king. And then we'd have a different view of Blackbeard? We wouldn't be sitting here talking about him right now because his, he, he became famous because he, he had he his head killed, cut yeah. off. Yeah, the, and, ba the Battle and, of Ocracoke, right? And became right? a great legend, right. Which we, uh, if, if you ever saw the, um, the outdoor drama just up at White Point, just up the road here, um, you know, you saw the Battle of Ocracoke and all that. It's pretty cool. Uh, some of my former co-workers were part of that for during the time that the um, outdoor drama was going on. So... The, uh, the Blackbeard trial will be tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. It is open to the public, by the way, uh, but you do have to make a reservation, right, Kevin? Yeah, you can make reservations by sending an email to uh, blackbeardtrial uh, at gmail.com or call Paula Weathington at the Beaufort County Courthouse at 940-4076. Um, She's take Because we can only uh, accommodate about 250 people. So we just want to make sure that if you so want to... So if you show up tomorrow without a reservation, you may or may not get in. Correct. Yeah. And the purpose of this is to determine if Blackbeard will be found guilty or not guilty of what? Um, piracy? Well, actually, we, you know we what? We know he was a pirate. Well, actually, I, and I, was, I was talking to the attorneys the other day, and really what's on trial is history. That's, what we're, that's what's on trial. I'm not exactly sure what the judge's findings were going to be. But we but, are going to consider is, what is, the lawfulness. What is, what is the charge? What is the charge what? against Blackbeard in this trial tomorrow? Actually, the charge is against, it's, it's more against Virginia and uh, oh. the Royal Navy as to whether... For invading North Carolina? Whether yeah. what they did was lawful or not. I uh, see. That's what we're going to find I out. I see. All right. And, and local people playing the governors and... Well, Governor Spotswood is actually coming from Virginia, and Lieutenant Maynard is coming from Virginia. And, and, is uh, Governor so, Eden coming from Edenton, where uh, I grew up? No, no, unfortunately. Gov <laughs> Governor Eden's me, actually do coming. Do you need from... me to play Governor Eden? Would you? No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you'll have to wear a wig. Can I put a powdered wig on you? <laughs> I don't look good in wigs. No. Uh, well, that's that's really interesting, and that'll be worth seeing. Is that going to be videotaped or anything for play? Yeah, there are a number uh, number of uh, local television stations that are attending. Number Pub of public, newspapers. Public TV uh, should be taping that. Right. Well, the, the TV show Life in the Carolinas is going to be there, and they're going to they've got three cameras. They're going to be covering it. I think we're going to have a, a packed courtroom. Wow, that's going to be something tomorrow afternoon. This whole thing kicks off at two o'clock in Washington, Beaufort County Courthouse. The trial of Black Blackbeard finally gets his day in court. Tomorrow, yes. after 300 years. Blackbeard will be there, too, by the way. Oh, he will? Yeah, well, he's not going to say much, but he'll be there. He's, uh, he doesn't get to testify? He doesn't, no, he won't have. Well, Is he going to be sitting at the... Uh, at the at, he's at the defense at, table, at the yes. De defendant's table? Okay, very good. Uh, Kevin Duffus, um, author of many books and a historian for Eastern North Carolina, one of the most knowledgeable people, I think, ever 
about Eastern North Carolina. Uh, we only got like a couple minutes left here in this segment. Uh, what else? What else do you want to tell us about the weekend uh, or any part of this that you've had a, a role in? Yeah. Um, well, uh, Saturday. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I want to say that we've we've planned this event to be uh, family friendly. That's really important. We want it to be. We're you back know, to the Saturday event now. In, Saturday in Bath. Saturday event in Bath from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, you know, every t little town, every town has a pirate festival these days, and they all tend to be the same. You know, it's all, yeah. you know, it's all, and they, so half the time, they don't even know what they're celebrating. But here in That's Bath, we're, I mean, we're celebrating real history. I can say for a fact that Blackbeard walked the street that is now known today as Main Street. He was on that ground. Blackbeard never set foot on the soil of Carteret County. He was only there for a week when he wrecked the Queen Anne's Revenge. But Blackbeard was here. But... So we've designed you, this you event just, to you be. You just made a lot of people in Carteret County very angry. Well, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> uh, they, facts is facts, right? They, they know that, but yeah. they, they still stick to their legend. But So <laughs> we're going to do a number of things that you've never seen before. I know Jason's already mentioned a, a skydiving Blackbeard. Um, we're bringing in uh, a brass six-pound cannon that's wow. going to be mounted at Bonner Point. And when, when, the, when that's fired... It, they will hear it in Greenville, I promise you, because <laughs> uh, that is a, a – and I don't think that a six-pound cannon has been fired in Bath since <laughs> 1718. This is probably the first time in wow. 300 years. Now, We've is this got, before or after the uh, skydiving Blackbeards will show up in Bath? This after. is – it's actually right before the skydivers <laughs> – okay. uh, in fact, I think we, you know, we're worried about shooting them out of the sky with this <laughs> cannon. But, uh, the uh, – uh, we're going to have a sea battle in, in, in Bath Creek. We're going to replicate a, a, a typical pirate siege of another ship. Wow. Uh, we've got two pirate ships that will be firing uh, cannon at each other. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to have uh, this uh, children's parade, and everyone's going to be dressed up like Blackbeard. My two golden retrievers are going to be dressed up like Blackbeard. <laughs> uh, we're going to have the world's tallest Blackbeard. Uh, lead this parade uh, up Main Street. And what time does the parade start? Ten? No, it's going to be. We're going to be uh, a set, gathering everybody about eleven o'clock, and we'll probably okay. start. We're going to. But the events start at Bonner's Point at ten o'clock. Correct. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. We are actually uh, running up on a hard break. Kevin Duffus, our guest in this segment, the uh, the author of many Eastern North Carolina and coastal lore books. Uh, including the last days of Blackbeard. Where, where do you get your books, by the way? Are they available on Amazon, or, uh, go, Barnes and uh, Noble? Uh, Amazon, KevinDuffus.com. So you, you can order them right from you on your website. Absolutely. When you Kevin order them right Duffus. from me, I get to sign them personally. You know, inscribe. D u f f u s. By the way, KevinDuffus.com. All right. Again, we're live in Bath, the Blackbeard Tricentennial coming up this weekend. We've got more coming up from Bath here, live from the Old Town Country Kitchen. And uh, we'll be back. McGee will have some news headlines after the top of the hour. They will rejoin you here in Bath. So come on back and be with us. Cable 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information, and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. Hey, ho, ho. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We're live in Bath this morning. It is uh, a big week in Bath because uh, this weekend we have the Blackbeard 300. It's the centen tricentennial of Blackbeard's death. It starts tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock with the trial of Blackbeard in Washington. It will continue on with a big um, sponsors uh, event at uh, the Turnage Theater tomorrow night. And then all day Saturday, we're going to have activities here in Bath at Bonners Point starting at 10 with the kids' activities. That's a family-friendly event. And uh, they've got bands, and they'll finish the evening with fireworks. It's a lot going on. And these two guys I've got with me right here are – the guys responsible for it, my buddy Jason Pear. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Henry. How you Pear doing? Electronics. He lives down here in Bath. And Kevin Duffus, the famous author who has written more books about Bath and Blackbeard and Eastern North Carolina, I think, now than anybody. Kevin just uh, gave us a a brief little uh, history of uh, Blackbeard and and uh, talked about the uh, trial tomorrow. Very interesting stuff. And and Kevin, thank you. Kevin just gave me a copy of his new book, Into the Burning Sea which uh, this is one of six books that Kevin Duffus has written. 
And uh, he also wrote uh, The Last Days of Blackbeard. And uh, what's this one? The Story of Cape Fear in Bald Head story. Island. Oh, this is Spans a, 500 years of history. This is a big one right here, The Story that of is. Cape Fear. Uh, so uh, tell us again how to get your books, and then I want you to tell me a little bit about what this new book's about. Sure. Well, actually, if you, you know, the best way to get the book is to come to Bath on Saturday. I'll be here. I've, uh, my wife and I are going to be sitting at a tent at Bonner Point, and I'll be happy to, to sign books to folks. And uh, By the way, he just signed mine. And uh, this new book is about something that took place 100 years ago uh, off of the coast of, uh, off of uh, Hatteras Island at Rodanthe. A uh, British ship was torpedoed about four and a half miles off the beach, and six lifesavers or Coast Guardsmen from the uh, Chickamacomico Coast Guard Station launched a surf boat. It took them four tries to launch it in huge waves that were breaking on the beach. Uh, by the time they got out to the ship, the entire ocean was on fire. Uh, for a number of square miles were entirely on fire. This ship was carrying 300,000 gallons of aviation fuel. And these six Coast Guardsmen maneuvered this lifeboat into the burning ocean and disappeared in clouds of uh, 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 burning uh, uh, fuel. And they eventually came out with 42 of the 51 British sailors that were aboard the ship. In a lifeboat. In a life. Well, they they ended up having they had uh, they the ship actually launched two lifeboats, but they needed assistance. But then they had to land these guys on the beach at 10 o'clock at night in the dark. Now we've all been to the beach on the, in, on the outer banks, and we know how rough the surf is. Oh, Can yeah. you imagine trying to land a surf boat jam packed with men who were all badly burned yeah. and riding the wave, basically surfing the waves? It's the greatest what, what Coast Guard year? rescue what? in history. 1918, August of 1918, and 1918. Uh, one of the great parts about this story is that uh, all well, of those actually 100 years ago, right now, right. right. Um, all of those Coast Guardsmen obviously have since passed away. I've met the daughter of one of them and a number of granddaughters so you got still survive. you some of them yes. to write the book? Yes. And, uh, but the most amazing thing is I say that there were six Coast Guardsmen, but the seventh hero of the story is the surf boat itself, which you can go to Chickamacomico Life Saving Station this weekend. Not this weekend. We want you to come to Bath. <laughs> but the weekend after. And actually, that boat is still there in, oh, the, man. in, the, in the museum. Well, once can... I read the book, I'm going to have to go see the boat. That's, That's awesome. Right. All right. Kevin Duff is the author. Jason Pear here with us. Let me thank our sponsors. Uh, we are here live this morning at the Old Town Country Kitchen. Robin, you going to come on and talk to us in a minute? She's, she's thinking about it. Robin and Dalton Boyd own this place. This is a great spot, and, and I think all of Bath is showing up this morning, including Rick and Judy Miller. Good morning, guys. Two, de two Greenville defectors, former Greenville Mayor Pro Tem Rick Miller, who now moved to God's country, and his, uh, his boss, Judy, have shown up here this morning. We miss you guys in Greenville, by the way. You're not allowed to go back. <laughs> we'll give you a one-day pass. <laughs> uh, thanks to our sponsors this morning, the Rich Company, First Bank of Washington of Bellhaven, uh, Greek Spore Construction, uh, and, of course, uh, Pear Electronics. Jason's one of our sponsors this morning in the Old Town Country Kitchen. We will talk to uh, Robin in just a minute. And, Jason, big weekend here going to be family friendly all day on saturday i'm looking out there right now too bad it's not today boy what a beautiful morning out there. it really was. we're going to pray absolutely, for no rain absolutely gorgeous out there in bath this morning i stopped at bonner's point and took a picture this morning it was so beautiful when i was crossing the bath bridge i was like okay i'm going to be late but i'm i'm going down to bonner's point and get a picture of the sunrise so a absolutely uh, so uh, if you haven't been to bath before this would be a great weekend but in addition to that, it's just a great uh, a family event this weekend, and you guys have, have done it again. This is going to be a lot of fun. Well, it really is. You know, the, the I, I will say, you know, I, I want to give a, a special thanks, not just for the town of Bath, but to our foundation, some of our foundation members, Wayne Willard, uh, Jonathan Brooks from Greenville, uh, Rusty Duke from Greenville. Um, Jonathan Wayne, Brooks is a sponsor? No, he, they're, they're actually members of the, of the, oh, foundation. Of the foundation. And, okay. and Wayne Willard and Ellen and Lewis – and Teresa Gard and, you know, just a small group be able to make this happen. But I just want to also take earlier in the hour, I mentioned some sponsors. You know, the sponsors are really important uh, to us to make this happen. I want to, you know, give a quick special thanks to Water Genie, K.O. Orman, David's Trash, R.A. Jeffries, uh, the commissioners of Beaufort County, T.J.'s Marine Construction, Low Tide Realty, 
DS Swain Gas, Gerald C. Company, Everett Jones, Rod Cantrell, Morris Insurance, Sloan Insurance of Washington, Piston Ring, Time Finance, Washington Chrysler, Rod Emery, 3B Farms, Physicians East, the Quarter Deck, Avalanche, uh, the Myers over there. They built a new building on 264 with Sea Fox Boats, uh, Tideland Electric, Zaxby's, Chick fil A, Tidewater Energy. Uh, West Park Motors, Taylor Drug in Washington, Tri-County, River Street in Bellhaven, Southern Bank, Crestcom, and also Grady White. Is that it? We have some more, but I can't read them all <laughs> right now, so I just wanted to, it's hard to get them all in, but I wanted you know, to give them a so, mention. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say what's going through my mind while you're reading that list of sponsors. So there were more people that couldn't say no to you. Absolutely. No, no one can say no to Jason Perry. Yeah, why don't you, you know, if... If I could pay you uh, what you're making, I'd have you come sell advertising. But <laughs> I got all I can handle right you're, now. You're already, <laughs> the, you're already the number two in, uh, highest income in Pitt County behind Mr. Beast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. You're funny. All right. Thank you, Jason. And thanks uh -huh. to all those sponsors who've made this happen uh, for Bath this weekend. 19 after 8, we are at the Old Town Country Kitchen. This is my first time in the Old Town Country Kitchen. And I wanted to get Robin on here because she and her husband, Dalton Boyd, own this place. And uh, this is a little slice of Americana right here. This is a great spot. Good morning, Robin. How Good are you? Good morning. How long have you guys owned this place? We have been here since 2001. The grill has been here since 1990. Okay. And I was talking to Dalton earlier, your husband. He said he was born and raised here in Bath. How about you? Dal and I were both born and raised right down the road here in Bath. No kidding. And, um, and so this is kind of, uh, this is a big weekend for you guys, too. You're going to have a, uh, a lot of folks in Bath this weekend. And uh, do you guys do three meals a day here? We do three meals a day. We are here seven days a week. On Sunday, Monday, and Tuesdays, we close at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The rest of the week, we are here until 8 at night. Now, during the summer, I'm, I'm sure you guys are packed. We are packed. But do you stay, during the winter, you still have a pretty good, solid uh, customer base? We really do. We've been blessed here to have a lot of just local, everyday folks. And, yeah. of course, we do have a lot of people coming just through and, and stop in on their way to the Outer Banks or other destinations. But, um, yeah, we have a lot of just local, everyday folks. The Old Town Country Kitchen. What's the uh, what's the menu like for lunch and dinner? I know you got great breakfast food. I just saw, and by the way, I'm going to be partaking here shortly. So we just do your country everyday uh, kind of food uh, that people come in and and just enjoy. Um, we have a daily special from pork chops and collard greens, and oh my, then we also chops. do a lot of steak and seafood on the weekends. I bet. All right, uh, the Old Town Country Kitchen, Robin Boyd, her, she and her husband, Dalton, own this place. Thank you for having us this morning and hosting us. Thank you so much you for being here. You guys are great. We appreciate, and by the way, some of the best coffee I've ever had. I'm, I've been able to taste your coffee so far, but I'm going to have breakfast when I get off the air here. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Good to see you. All right, uh, Jason, where are we? Come on around here, bubs. Get on over here. we got to get the mayor, and uh, Jimmy, come on over here. we got Bubs Carson, who is the uh, town manager We've had Bubs on before, and uh, the actual mayor of Bath, Jimmy Latham, is here. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Fine. Good morning. Mr. Mr. Welcome mayor, to Bath. Mr. Mayor, can I ask you, uh, is, is it, does it offend you that, that Jason Pear thinks he's the mayor and you're actually the mayor? Not a bit. Not a bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, I, I, just, I, you know, I can just blend in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bubs Carson, who is the uh, town manager here. Bubs is back on. We've had Bubs on in the past. How you doing, my friend? Great. Good great. to see you. And, uh, Good we to see you. Things appreciate are great you bath coming this morning. Beautiful back. morning. Absolutely. Just seems like a couple of years ago, you're here helping us celebrate the first port yeah. celebration. Yeah. Several years back, uh, we had the General Assembly come for our tricentennial, which was 2005. And now we're excited about celebrating Blackbeard. I just I was just here last month or maybe August uh, for a wedding Correct. in St. Thomas Church, yep. which is the oldest Absolutely. church in North Carolina. 1734, uh, I believe. Patrick Johnson, uh, uh, one of our guys who does our afternoon show on 94.3 yep. The Game, got married in the church. Yep. Beautiful Absolutely. ceremony, very small church. But uh, Kevin was just telling me that one of Blackbeard's guys actually helped build that church. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of... A lot of history, and Kevin's certainly an expert on that, of, of Blackbeard and Bath and yeah. the incorporation of that. And 
certainly one of the things we are benefit from is uh, when the people came to settle Bath, they settled a high piece of property. So we didn't experience much of the damage that other well, Eastern I was, North I was, I was actually getting ready to ask you, and I'll ask the mayor, Mr. Mayor, Bellhaven, of course, much lower land in Bellhaven yes. got, uh, my friends down there had a lot of problems, but uh, how about the hurricane here? N nothing nothing serious? No, sir. We we were, the, the, the Lord camped in Bath, North Carolina the weekend of the 14th. <laughs> I mean, we were just, we were spared. I don't yeah. know. It, we were spared. Well, you are on high ground, just like Bub said. So that's. Yes. Uh, what are what's going on in Bath? What are the big issues? Now, I know money is always an issue, and Jason <laughs> Jason was saying that you guys are going to take the money raised this weekend and use it for some infrastructure needs here. Yes, sir. Uh, the biggest issue we have in front of us now is the uh, we had a wastewater upgrade several years ago, and um, it's not working. So we're having to kind of sort of maybe reinvent the wheel in in regards to that. And at that point, we can offer some more sewage flow and, uh, you know, open up some spots for new construction and, and uh, business and so forth. We're, we're looking forward to that happening. It's just a, just a slow process. Yeah. And um, w with regard to, uh, to your political career, how long have you been mayor of Bath? So long you can't Are we remember? on... Are, uh, is this being recorded? You're, I've got to be careful live. how I say Oh, really? You're actually <coughs> live. Darn. Uh, I think we're going on uh, 10, ten years. years, and I've got Man, two left. you've been left. in politics longer than Rick <coughs> Miller was. Yeah. I, Forever, I, Judy said. Yeah, I've got two years left on my concurrent sentence, I believe. <laughs> On your current sentence. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Bub's uh, bath is just such a beautiful place. I drove down this morning. I got some old friends from Grand. How you guys doing? They're neighbors here in Bath, yeah. and we've got uh, both of them involved in politics nice, here in Bath. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I've seen a lot of a lot of friendly faces that I've known over the years. Absolutely. And you know, it's interesting. You got a lot of people down here who've moved from Greenville and that want to live in Bath full time, and I, I'm seeing a lot of them in here this morning. David and Melissa are perfect examples, and yeah. uh, one of the we can't say enough kind things about the people that move into our area. They yeah. want to become involved. And one of the unique things, I think they want to become involved to keep Bath the way it is. They enjoy the beauty of it, and they want to work with the town. And um, Jason is a perfect example. We could not ask uh, an, an organization or a foundation to do more for the town than the Greater Bath Foundation. Yeah, they are always coming to the town to ask, what can we do to help? Yeah, yes. and Jason, Jason, it's a labor of love for Jason. I know that. Absolutely. I talk to him all the time, and he's always talking to me about Bath. Yes, and he's a so. tireless worker, and, and, and the other people he listed are equally. And, and you know, uh, you said something about keeping Bath the way it is. I, I drove down. Uh, is it the main street that goes down yes, to Bonner's Point? Absolutely. Is that is that what you consider That's exactly main street? Correct. I mean, you get a you, you, you feel like you're driving through downtown Williamsburg, absolutely. Colonial Williamsburg. It's a very colonial feel, and there are a lot of historic uh, homes in there and buildings. And yes. if people have never been here and experienced Bath, you know, driving by St. Thomas Church this morning, yes, uh, it's almost a semi-religious experience. It is. It is <laughs> in uh, very unique. And uh, I think I probably mentioned a couple of years ago when we talked, the two priorities that always come up on surveys when we survey people in the community, protecting the natural environment and protecting our historical heritage. Yeah. And we have a group that is very engaged in that. And uh, I think you got to witness some of the benefits of that by driving down Main Street. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Uh, and, of course, it's great to have Kevin Duffus here, who, who is the number one historian for Bath. Really Kevin's become the number one historian for Eastern North Carolina, period. So. That's what he tells us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, anything you want to say? Are you up for election this time? No, sir. Oh, you said no, you got sir. two more years yeah, left on years your sentence. Two years concurrent sentence, yes. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, you, going back to what Mr. Carson said and what you were saying about Main Street, we've had people you know, just from out of town, out of state, come down and, you know. They just, probably are surprised. They don't know until they see it, right? That's right. But, folks, we, we've had to comment that I want to live – here. I want to live on Main Street in Bath, yeah. North Carolina. So uh, that's something we're very proud of. Well, I tell you, I, you know, I was driving down there to Bonner's Point right at sun, sunrise this morning, and it, it seriously is, Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's therapeutic. It's, it's, it is therapeutic. It, you know, it was a very peaceful feeling, and I needed it this morning. Yeah. So, <laughs> when I might be back. When Governor McCrory was here, what, uh, two years, years ago, ago that celebration. He, uh, he talked about sitting at that. Uh, bench that look, yeah. looks straight out the right creek. He said point, when yeah. he gets when he gets really jammed up, you know, he can sit there and it'll just 
just clear him yeah. out. By the way, I talked to Governor McCoy yesterday. It was his birthday yesterday. Wow. wow. Happy birthday. So if you happy see him on Facebook birthday. or something, Absolutely. you need to tell the governor uh, happy birthday. Absolutely. And I keep trying to get him to tell me if he's going to run or not. And the answer I get is, I'll tell you later. There you go. <laughs> so what do you think that means, Bob? I think that's a true politician, the way he's answering that question. <laughs> well, let's ask the politician. What does that mean when he won't give an answer, but he's, he says he'll tell me later? I'd say it's a pretty smart politician. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to mention about the well, weekend or bath? We're weather? excited, and the weather that you mentioned earlier, uh, when I watched the weather this morning, it sounded like the rain would be early in the day. Let's and move out, yeah. and we would have a perfect uh, Saturday afternoon. I hope so. so I we're hope excited so about side. all the events, a lot of work that has been put into this, and, and I think the uh, key that Jason mentioned, everything we do and everything that the Greater Bath Foundation does for the town is family-friendly events. Yeah. And the Memorial Day, which is a an annual celebration that you've helped us celebrate before, that has been a huge success. There's no us. alcohol. In any Absolutely. Way. Yeah. Right. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Bubs thank Carson, you. the town manager of Bath. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure for me. And uh, Mayor Jimmy Latham. Yes. The thank mayor you, sir. of Bath. Thank you both for being you're welcome here. Welcome anytime. Well, we appreciate. It. Oh, you're getting applause. Uh, that's for Mr. Carson. That's the mayor. That's the mayor. That's, that's for mayor. Mr. Carson. You're, uh, you, your, your people are here this morning. <laughs> yeah. Your people are here now. There could be some protesters outside. I haven't looked. Oh yeah. They're in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have protesters in Bath? Unfortunately, no, yes. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get a break in. We're at the Old Town Country Kitchen here in. Uh, in Bath, and uh, thanks to Dalton and Robin for uh, having us here this morning. What a great spot. Absolutely. And I am now 30 minutes from breakfast here. I cannot wait. Good. We'll take a break and come back, and we'll talk more about the big weekend coming up in Bath for the Blackbeard Tricentennial right after this. Okay, welcome back. We're live in Bath this morning, Old Town Country Kitchen. Thanks to our sponsors this morning who have uh, sponsored the program, Rich Company. Uh, Jason Pear from Pear Electronics, who is also uh, the guy who put this big 300 celebration together for the Blackbeard event this weekend. Uh, Greek Spore Construction. Of course, our friends at Old Town Country Kitchen. And First Bank of uh, Bellhaven, uh, Washington and Bellhaven. And my friend, uh, I haven't seen him in a while, William Taylor, who is the uh, area executive and senior vice president for uh, First Bank, is here. How you doing, William? Good morning, Henry. Good I'm doing great. You. Good to see you again. Now, do you live here or you live in Washington? I live right here in Bath. Moved do here you? almost five years ago, Henry. Lived my whole life in Washington and decided to move down to All a right, little, well, tell us what it's like. Of, it's like living in paradise. It's like living in Mayberry with Andy Griffith and, <laughs> and Barney. And, and just uh, everybody is so friendly and <laughs> We love the country kitchen. We come here, we see Dow and Robin just about twice a week, and, uh, <laughs> it, it, and their staff's wonderful, Henry. That's great. That's great. Well, what's going on at First Bank? You guys have had some growth in recent. You and I just talking about the fact yeah. your business is good, huh? There's, no, there's only one. I only hear one complaint about First Bank. And? Some of your board members. <laughs> well, you know, because I understand yeah. Jason Pears on your board now. We, we have a few questionable <laughs> ones, but you know, we're still working on Jason. No, J uh, Jason has—he's uh, on our advisory board, and he's been a great advocate for us. He yeah. really has, and he—you yeah. know, you know, Jason knows a lot of people. I, trust me, <laughs> and, and you know, and, and no one can say no to it. Look at that list of sponsors right there. That's why our name's on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we're in Bath this morning. But, but we love being in Bath. We always love it when we come down here. Uh, so how how many uh, how many locations now for First Bank? We have about 105 branches. Most of them are in North Carolina. We have a few in South Carolina. And, and, and the home office still is it Southern Pines? Yes, it's in Southern Pines. Richard uh, uh, Richard Moore, Rich, still Rich, the, Richard Moore, uh, the past president? state treasurer for the right, state yeah, of North yeah. Carolina, and uh, he's just doing an outstanding job leading our company. Yeah, and you got a you got a, a beautiful new building on Arlington Boulevard in Greenville. Too. Yes, we do, and Lee Watson and a fine staff over there are are yeah. very proud of that, and it's it's That's going awesome. real well. That's Henry. awesome. Okay, well, thank you for stopping in this morning. Are you having breakfast? I think I'll grab a quick bite before I leave. But before I leave, can you give us a prediction on the uh, East Carolina Central oh my, Florida game this, out loud. this Why are you weekend? It up? <laughs> I don't want to do that. No, no prediction. Okay, to do it. thank you. Henry. I don't want to do that. Thank you, William. Good to see you, man. All right, we are live at uh, in Bath, and uh, we've got uh, Jason Pear back with us this morning. Who else are we talking to? We got some more folks coming in. Uh, I'm, I'm just know. I'm just following you. You're the producer this morning. Yeah. I'm just following you. I really pre I appreciate it. We got a couple more things I want Kevin to you know uh, Kevin to talk about. But you know, a, a lot of people think you know uh, working with Kevin on this has been a really it's been a really good adventure. 
you know, I, I always thought Kevin was one of those, you know, guys like the, you know, he, he could find anything. And, and, you know, one of the biggest things is people say, well, you know, all that black beer stuff is not true. But, you know, actually Kevin actually found a real copy from England, from the, from the, 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 the King's archives of the real pardon that the king actually wrote for Blackbeard, and it was real. And the thing I, is, I wanted to talk about that. So, uh, Kevin Duffus, again, uh, the author of Last Days of Blackbeard and many other books, he's written six books. Uh, we have a copy here, uh, Kevin, of the proclamation from the king of England who pardoned. So, we got the trial coming up tomorrow, which he, we were just saying he never really got tried. And I want to go back and give the finer points of what we're going to be talking about tomorrow with the trial. I think that's one of the coolest parts of the weekend. But the King of England actually pardoned Blackbeard. What was he pardoning him for, well, it, and how did this come about? He wasn't spe pardoning Blackbeard specifically. He was pardoning uh, all part all pirates who were active uh, in 1717, 1718. The reason is that, um, and, and the, the pardon wasn't unusual. Kings back to Henry VIII had pardoned pirates. So uh, th this wasn't the first time this happened, but uh, Great Britain was about to declare war on Spain and they needed all of, the, all of these guys who were pirates had formerly been privateers, which was simply licensed piracy. Right. And uh, that could only occur when nations were at war with each other. All right, and now so wait, stop, stop for a second. You said privateers were licensed pirates? Basically, okay, yes. Okay, tell me what that, that you got to explain that first because I've, I've always wondered what's the difference between a pirate and a privateer? Well, uh, unlike today, uh, Spain and England had relatively small navies. So they supplemented their navies with merchant sailors who were given a, a license, they called it a letter of mark, that allowed them to attack the enemy nation's ship and then steal all of their uh, cargo. It, it was basically a war on commerce. And so this supplemented the Navy, and it helped uh, the, 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 the nations, uh, you know, wage war against their, their enemies. So all of these guys, the, the, all, all Blackbeard and his crew were basically merchant sailors okay. on, a, on, on a regular, that was their day job. Right. Okay? And they also were licensed privateers. But when Spain and England uh, signed a peace treaty, then they couldn't be privateers anymore. But they had no, uh, they didn't know uh, other, any other way to live. So they continued raiding Spain ships and, and that of course at that time was piracy. Well the king, you know, the, uh, England was about to declare war on Spain. He needed all of these pirates to be legalized again and the only way he could do that was to pardon them. So the king sent out a pardon to the colony saying if, if, you, par if you pirates will surrender to your local governor he will give you a pardon on my behalf, and then you can go out and then be privateers again. Well, not enough. A lot of these pirates were out there sailing around, and they didn't know that this pardon was on the way. So the king actually sent out a second pardon. That's the pardon that we've just uh, held up here. This was before Blackbeard was killed. This was before Black It was on its way. It was only two to three weeks. It was on a ship. You know, it took a long time, for six weeks, for a ship to come yeah. over from England. So this new pardon was only about two to three weeks away from arriving both in North Carolina and Virginia. Unfortunately, Blackbeard was killed at Ocracoke. Okay, so if, the Battle of Ocracoke took place right before, while this was on the ship coming over from England to pardon Blackbeard. All right, now, um, we, we talked earlier about uh, the, the Battle of Ocracoke and Blackbeard was killed on Ocracoke Island. Who killed him and why? Um, well... Uh, Lieutenant Maynard and, and 60 Royal Navy sailors killed Blackbeard, and they killed him basically to try to uh, recover evidence that would help overthrow uh, the, the government of North Carolina, to turn North Carolina into a royal colony so that the king would own, own North Carolina. Um, so was Blackbeard defending the state of North Carolina when he was killed? Is that what you're um, saying? Well, he, was, he basically was defending himself. He was minding his own business out at yeah. Ocracoke, yeah. and these guys come sailing up one morning, and he didn't know that, who they were. Did they you know, know who he was? Yes, they knew who he was. But the, the other thing is, and this will come out in the trial tomorrow, the Royal Navy uh, sailors didn't wear uniforms in 1718. So he basically saw these guys wearing civilian clothes. I think that initially he thought that they were former crew members that he – abandoned and betrayed at Beaufort Inlet when he wrecked Queen Anne's Revenge, they were out looking for him. And I think that he thought that these were his ex-shipmates who were hunting him down. 
He didn't know that they were the Royal Navy, and Lieutenant Maynard didn't identify himself. He didn't say, it's not like a, uh, a law enforcement operation today where, you, you know, this is the Beaufort County Sheriff's Department. Right, right. They didn't say we're Royal Navy. Right. I, I want to add very quickly, too, we were talking about Saturday, and we are talking about cannon and skydiving blackbeards and a sea battle. <laughs> and you, we mentioned East Carolina football. Uh, one of our uh, special groups that's going to be uh, here Saturday afternoon is a group called the Shadow Players. They are a sword fighting group, but they're led by the guy who is the East Carolina Pirate. Uh, oh, yeah. Steve, Pir yeah. Pirate Steve. Oh. Well, he'll be here. So he'll be here do, before the game. He'll be here before the game. He told me, he said, I, now I've got to leave by you know, five o'clock because I've got to go. I got to go put my game face. He's got to come know? out the purple haze. That's right. That's awesome. So he'll be All here. Right. We got to get a break in. One of the other interesting things that's happening is ECU uh, Joiner Library is having a traveling exhibit uh, of th the 300th anniversary of Blackbeard's death. And when we come back, we're going to talk to uh, Charlotte uh, Fitz at the ECU Joiner Library by phone back in Greenville and hear what they've got going on as well so stay with us we're live in bath this morning it is the blackbeard tricentennial week the trial of blackbeard tomorrow afternoon at the beaufort county courthouse we'll give you the number to call to get a reservation before we go off the air again kevin can tell us about that and more live from the uh, old town country kitchen in bath here on talk of the town right after this Okay, welcome back. We are live on location this morning in Bath, and we've had a great time with our friends down here in Bath for the uh, Bath Tricentennial. I love it when we come down here because Kevin Duffus is very educational, and he teaches me a lot about the place where we live, and it's also fun to see a lot of our friends. I mentioned that in addition to what's happening in Bath this weekend, uh, ECU Joiner Library is going to have uh, a big uh, 300th anniversary of Blackbeard uh a display coming in. This is a traveling exhibit that is already on display at ECU right now, and I think we've got Charlotte Daniels, Charlotte Fitz Daniel, on the phone. Charlotte, can you hear me? Cannot hear her, guys. No. No, sir. Charlotte, are you there? Okay, we'll have to try to get her back. That is not working, so... <laughs> So we'll try to get her back in the last segment here before we say goodbye. Uh, but um, as we continue here this morning, uh, we've got uh, we got Kevin, Kevin Duffus, the author, and um, and also we have uh, uh, Jason Pear here with us this morning. And again, uh, I wanted to reiterate the points, uh, Kevin, of what is going to happen tomorrow because the event tomorrow. Uh, which is going to take place at the Beaufort County Courthouse, I think is one of the most interesting parts of the whole weekend when Blackbeard will finally go on trial. He will be tried. Uh, the actual Beaufort County prosecutor, the district attorney, Seth Edwards, will, will uh, prosecute the case. Uh, he will have his own lawyer. And Judge Cole, who is a federal judge, is going to – he, the, He's a superior – North Carolina his, his superior court judge. His wife is the federal judge. Right, right. Uh, the, uh, judge Cole, uh, the male Judge Cole, is yes. a superior court judge. And he is going to preside, and we're going to finally find out whether Blackbeard is guilty or not. Right. right. And another special uh, part of this is that we've got a number of uh, Beaufort County school students who are going to attend that trial, and we're going to actually put 12 of them in the jury box. And I know Judge Cole is looking forward to uh, asking those students what they think after they hear all of the witnesses uh, testify. So that's really, I've been uh, telling folks that, that I think of this entire year and all of these Blackbeard celebrations in Beaufort and Bath and everywhere else. This is going to be one of the most significant things because history is on trial tomorrow afternoon. We're going to we're going to judge whether history uh, has uh, has has been accurate or not. Uh, the other thing tomorrow night at the Turnage Theater, and I know uh, tickets are still available. Jason can speak to that, but we're going to have an event called an evening with Blackbeard and friends from 6:30 to 10 at the Turnage Theater. And one of my favorite parts of tomorrow of tomorrow evening, we're going to put on a game show titled "Will the Real Blackbeard Please Stand Up?" <laughs> and it's awesome. going to feature three Blackbeards and a panel of four people who uh, who's. And it's based on the game show to tell the truth. That's great. And so we're going to have Polly Bergen and Orson Bean and all those, uh, all those. <laughs> Orson and, Bean, and, I haven't heard that name in and, 40 and, years. And they're, they're going to interrogate these three black, Blackbeards to try to figure out which one is the real Blackbeard. And I, I, I've seen this done once. 
and it's so funny. Uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, people will really enjoy it. And by the way, are there still tickets for that, Jason? There are. We still have some tickets available. They can, you know, get those. They can call me two five two four one three ninety five seventeen, or uh, they can go to you know blackbear three hundred dot com. But uh, you know, it's really going to be a really nice event. It's coat and tie, cocktail. Uh, type event, and uh, the, I don't think there'll be nothing else like it. Well, it's yeah. being catered by uh, Chrislyn of, of Washington, and yep. she's featuring a special menu that's been designed uh, titled A Taste of 1718 that's going to feature uh, a, a, a food that are um, you know Native American fare, food that might have been familiar to Blackbeard and also uh, English folks. We've got a, a Baroque, uh, uh, we're going to have Baroque music playing, we're also going to have, we're going to feature uh, two uh, pirate bands, Rusty Cutlass and also the Motley Tones are going to play tomorrow evening. They'll also be here Saturday, and they're performing uh, all day yep. uh, at various venues. We're going to have a map for everybody to, to look at and, and to know where everything's taking place. And then s uh, Saturday evening, we have a, a band uh, the Patriots. The, the Patriots. Jason, okay. you might want to talk about yeah, the, the Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots is a band. You know, it's an old uh, '60s and '70s band from you know just like the Embers, and uh, you Play know beach the, music. The, yeah, beach music and all kinds of music. It's going to be great. Yeah, you know, one thing Kevin was going to say also too is that I really encourage the parents to bring their kids for this. You know, we live in a a different generation. You know, I'm only 40 years old, but the thing is now is that everybody can find things on an iPad or YouTube and things like that are great but actually really put your hands and be able to feel it and see the history is that we don't want that history to fade away because it's so important all right that sounds great and by the way if you want to get tickets uh for the blackbeard trial tomorrow afternoon you need to call paula weatherington the trial court coordinator at 252-940-4076 and um, or do you want them to contact you? I guess that's the best way to do it. That's right? the best way to do it. And tickets are free, but we we're cutting it off at 250 because the courtroom can't accommodate more right. people than that. Right. We're gonna have a lot of media people in there as well. Okay. All right. I think we finally got Charlotte uh, Fitz Daniels on from uh, Joiner Library at ECU. Charlotte, can you hear us now? Yes, I sure can. Well, we had to go to the cell phone because our <laughs> we did, the other system didn't work, and I apologize. Uh, but uh, tell us about uh, you guys. We, we've been so much Blackbeard talk this morning. You've been, uh, you guys have the 300th anniversary of Blackbeard traveling exhibit at Joiner Library yes. now through November 29th. Tell us about that. Well, it's an ex it's an exhibition all about Blackbeard. Um, there's actually some um, some um, objects from the Queen Anne's Revenge that we have on display. So that's pretty neat. We've got um, some. Um, some cannonballs and some plates and, and um, shot and all kinds of just um, things from the actual wreck. And we also have um, some pirates around the library. We've got a few pirates standing around. We've got um, um, some displays of flags. Um, a, a replica, a Blackbeard ship is here. Um, so we have all kinds of things. We also have a lot of books about Blackbeard that are on display right now, so it's pretty interesting. So this is all at uh, the library on campus at ECU, and it's open to the public. Is there a charge to come in and see it? There is no charge. Great. So just, uh, and uh, when is it when is it available for people to see? It's, it's available. Probably the best time to come is during the day. It's, um, you know, we're open 24 hours, but um, 7, but um, but um, you can come probably during the day. Okay. It's the best, probably from right. like 9 and to 6 or so. And you also, you guys also have uh, something going on Saturday as well, uh, yeah. uh, as part of this as well. A pirate themed family fun day over there for this. Yes, we sure do. We have. Um, uh, we're really excited about this. I think this is the first family fun day that Joiner Library has actually hosted before. But we're gonna. Um, families can view the Queen Anne's Revenge exhibition, and we also have a lot of free activities, such as face painting, um, you get photographs taken with pirates, we um, have um, um, the Storybook Theater is going to come at 10.30, and they're actually going to do a performance, a pirate okay. theme performance. All right, well um, listen, we're, we, gonna... uh, we're, we're running up on a hard break, I'm sorry we're running so late, but thank you for being on, and good luck with everything with Joiner Library. Absolutely. So have people come on out. Okay, great. Thank you, Charlotte. All right, 
Thank All you. right, Charlotte Fitz Daniels, the, uh, the the program and events coordinator for the Joiner Library, and uh, back here in uh, Beaufort, we got a uh, bath. We got like a uh, uh, one minute left. I need to mention uh, what we've got coming up tomorrow morning because we have our first elections forum tomorrow morning. It's going to be at 400 St. Andrews, and we've got the uh, Pitt County Sheriff's candidates that are going to be in front of our media panel ask answering questions tomorrow morning. It is open to the public, just like this morning was here in Bath. Come out in Greenville, 400 St. Andrews. We have a media panel uh, consisting of TV reporters and newspaper folks that will be asking the questions of the candidates. We'll start at 7.15 in the morning, live at uh, 400 St. Andrews. And uh, we'll start with the District 12 legislative race for House of Representatives, Chris Humphrey and George Graham. And then at 745, we'll have Candy Smith and Brenda Smith, the candidates out of District 8 for the legislative race for House of Representatives. And then at 815, the big race that everybody's talking about, the Pitt County Sheriff's Race, Paula Dance and Gary Weaver answering questions from the media. Again, there'll be a light breakfast served at 400 St. Andrews. It's open to the public. And a special thanks to our sponsors, Polly Pilon State Farm Insurance, Eastern Trust Real Estate, Children's World, Walton Academy. Thanks to the folks uh, there, Snow Tractor of Aden, and, of course, a special thanks to Brian and Rochelle at uh, 400 St. Andrews. And a special thanks to the folks here in Bath. Uh, Jason, we're done. We are. Uh, again, remind everybody that uh, 10 o'clock on the, the, all the family yep. fun events here in Bath start at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. Absolutely. You know, uh, the street opens at 10. We'll go to 9 p.m. Um, like we said, we'll have the three band events. We'll have the shadow players, about 60-some reenactors, the cannons, the skydivers, awesome. it's just, the boats, and everything. All day long here in Bath. It is. Uh, so uh, the Bath 300, thank you for being on, and thank you for setting us up this morning. Thank you, Henry. And thanks to the folks here at uh, our friends at uh, Old Town Country Kitchen and the rest of our sponsors, Rich Company, Pear Electronics, First Bank, and Greek Sport Construction. Everybody have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.